Hello, how are you? I hope you had a great week. I did. It was a lot of fun. I'm really excited about today's video because I have so many new makeup products to try. Yes, I've been makeup shopping again. I have the foundation that went viral. Haven't tried this yet. and It's been around for a while. A new palette by ColourPop, a Fenty Beauty bronzer, and a NARS blush, highlighter from ColourPop, and I have the full set of the Angie Hot and Flashy brushes from BK Beauty. I'm so excited to try these. And I finally picked picked up the Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This is the concealer from the same line that is one of my favorite foundations, the Forever Skin Glow from Dior, so I'm really excited about this one. And I have a new matte lipstick from Revlon. If you're new here, welcome in. I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 and over 60 women, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. We're gonna hop right into all this new makeup today and as always, all products that I used and mentioned today will be listed and linked below, so super easy for you to find. And with that, let's hop into it. I've got all my skincare done and as a matter of fact, this is how I went to breakfast with my friend this morning. It's so funny, I went out to breakfast with my skincare on and then I came home so I can do my makeup. For primer today, I'm gonna to use the Catrice Prime and Fine. This is their Poreless Blur Primer. I think I've used this a couple of times. Catrice has a number of primers. I've liked every single one of them. And here's the interesting thing about the Catrice primers is that they're all different. Like they, one is a hydrating primer, one is a pore filling primer, one is a mattifying primer. And what I have found or my experience has been is that they do exactly what they say they do. Sometimes a line will come out with all these different types of products in one line but they won't do anything different. Catrice really does a great job with their primers, so I've liked every single one. This one is feeling very silky and very silicone-y. It feels moisturizing and hydrating. It kind of has that real hydrating underfeel with a very, very poor feeling top, if that makes sense. So today I'm handicapped. I'm working with more than one cat scratch on my face. I've got one right here on the tip of my nose. Can you see that right there? And I've also got a couple here. My cat needs a dog. I'll tell you what, he needs someone else to beat up on besides me. He thinks that my purpose on this earth is to get up and play with them all day long. And as rough as he wants to play, that's what he wants to do. Truly, I need to get him a dog. For our eyeshadow primer today, I'm gonna to use what's become my new favorite. This is from Beauty Pie. It's their Flawless Eyeshadow Primer. For me, it's kind of a mix between the Milani and the Anastasia Beverly Hills. It holds like the Milani and it covers like the Anastasia of Beverly Hills, but this one is kind of too much coverage. Does that make any sense? In other words, it's really tough to get a small enough amount to really give an even light film over my lip. This one from Beauty Pie is kind of in between both of them. And you can see as I put it on, it really has an opaque finish which does a great job of covering up all the lines and discoloration on my lids, which have gotten more significant as I've gotten older. Imagine that. For brows, I'm gonna be using the Maybelline Brow Extensions. I don't know if you've seen this product or not. It's been around for a while and I've actually used it a few times. A lot of people really, really love this pencil because it actually has fibers in the formula. So when you fill your brow in, it kind of fills out your brows and makes them look a little bit fluffier. I like it. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it does a great job of filling in the brows pretty quickly. I'm gonna put on a little bit of my City Lips Clear just to hydrate my lips while I do my makeup. I picked up the Bye Bye Birdie palette from ColourPop and I got this specifically because it's a little bit out of my comfort zone. It's a really bright, colorful palette. As you can see, it's a very, very purple colorway. And what I've been noticing is that I have been putting together a lot of very neutral looks I love neutral looks. I think they look so sophisticated and so pretty. Specifically for someone my age, I feel like a little bit more subtle eyeshadow is appropriate in most cases, but you know what? I just felt like doing something a little bit more colorful and a little bit outside of the box and outside of my comfort zone. So I picked this up and I am hoping that I'm gonna be able to stick to something a little bit more exotic, <laughs> different, brighter than what I usually do. You can see this palette is just beautiful. We have a lot of gorgeous purples in here 
and some pretty pinks. And of course, there's some really glittery shades in here, which are not gonna show up on my eyes, but nevertheless, they're here. You can see all the chunky glitter in that one. This one looks like the same thing, yeah. So we'll be avoiding those two pans. I almost wanna like put tape over them or something. <laughs> so the glitter doesn't get in any of the other shadows. Like I mentioned, I have a full set of the Angie Hot and Flashy brushes from BK Beauty. I'm sure you know who Angie is. She is just a legend in the mature beauty community. And of course, Lisa J, she has a beauty channel here on YouTube. She has the BK Beauty brush line, that's her company. She did a collaboration with Angie from Hot and Flashy, and this is the set. I think that first of all, they're just beautiful brushes. The gorgeous gray tones and the colorway is just so very pretty. So depending on how you use them, it looks like we have five eye brushes and two face brushes. I'm really excited to use these today. What I hear about this particular line is it's specifically designed for more mature skin. And what Angie did is that she used a very, very soft bristle for these brushes so it doesn't move our skin so much. You know, sometimes when you go to put eyeshadow on and your skin just moves back and forth, these brushes are super soft from what I'm hearing and do a great job with more mature skin. I do have a discount code with BK Beauty. It's down below in the description box in case you wanna go check these out. I'm gonna start out with the A503 brush. I'm gonna dip it into this light shell pink called Nesting. <laughs> And that's gonna go all over both lids from top to bottom, just to lay down a nice base. Now I'm going to take the A502 brush and dip it into this color called Boo Bird right here. This is a deeper, richer, muted pink. And I'm gonna put that right above my natural crease to just start creating some definition in that area. These are very, very pigmented and very smooth like ColourPop formulas generally are. That's one of the nice things about ColourPop is you really do get a lot of pigment in their shadows. Bring that down on the outer edge of the lower lid, just real softly. Now I'm going to go back with that 503 and just blend that in so the edges are really soft. Now I'm going to take the 504 brush. This is a very, very tiny brush, and I can tell you the bristles on these brushes are so soft. They're just lovely. I'm going to dip it into Fly By Night, kind of a deep, rich, burgundy brown color, and that's going to go right deep in the crease and towards the outside edge of my lower lid, and that's going to really deepen up that crease area. These brushes are great to work with. I love the fact that this is so tiny. It really does make getting in that area very, very easy. See how precise I can lay down that color? Gosh, that's so nice. Angie, I'm so glad that you thought of this brush. I'm gonna bring that color up just a little bit towards the outside of my eye and up towards the eyebrow to give the appearance of a little bit of lift. Now back in with the 503 and I'm just going to blend that out. These shadows are blending so nicely. No patchiness, really smooth transition from color to color. Okay, I said I was going to go a little bit brighter today. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm going to take the A505 brush. This is kind of a flat brush with a little bit of point on the tip there. I'm going to dip it into this bright purple color right here, Hair and Chic. Just get that right on the brush, and that's going to go on the movable lid almost about two thirds of the way to the inside corner. Now I'm going to go back in with the 503 brush and just blend that in. Now I'm going to take my finger and dip it into this color on a wing. This is a very, very kind of mauve shimmer shade. It's very muted, and that's gonna go right on the inside corner of my eye, and I'm gonna overlap it onto that lid color just a little bit. Now I'm going to take that tiny 504 brush, I love this brush, dip it back into Fly By Night, and I'm just gonna deepen up that outer corner a little bit more. Just want to emphasize that outside corner and kind of give a little lift to the eye there. Back in with the 503 and just blend that out. 
For foundation, I'm going to be trying the L'Oreal Infallible 24-Hour Fresh Wear Powder Foundation. This foundation just went viral a few months back. I think the thing that was so unusual about it is that it was a powder foundation, but older women were saying it worked really beautifully. I haven't tried it. I've had it in my collection for a while. I haven't tried it yet. What I'm curious about is how different is it from the L'Oreal Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation. I've used this a few times and I was amazed when I used it at how creamy it was that a powder foundation could look so good on my very mature skin. I'm really curious to see how this one is going to be different from this one. What I can say is this is a very different formula. It feels a lot more powdery than this one. This felt really creamy going on. This one is feeling more powdery. I don't know how it's going to look on the skin after it settles in, if it's going to look dry or cakey or what. I do know that a lot of people really, really love it. I'd love to tell you what color this is, but when I took the tape off that was holding it shut, it pulled off the color name as well, so I can't tell you. But it does look like it's a pretty good color match. It's going on really smoothly, and it does seem to be covering up all my age spots and discoloration. It's a weird feeling going on. It feels like powder going on, not foundation so much. It's definitely not glowy, that's for sure. I'm going to go ahead and press it in with my sponge. It's definitely a very matte finish. I'm wondering what it would be like using it with a glowy primer, like a really glowy moisturizing primer if that would give it a little bit more of a dewy finish. It has good coverage. It doesn't necessarily feel heavy. And what I can say when I look at it really close up in my mirror is that it doesn't look heavy on the skin. In other words, it doesn't look like powder. It almost sort of looks skin-like, which is a weird thing. It looks much more skin-like than I would think from this type of foundation. These are my first impressions. It's a very matte finish, but it's not a heavy matte finish. It looks actually pretty nice. I don't know that this is the type of finish that I prefer on my skin, but if you like a matte finish, this will definitely give you a matte finish. It feels a lot lighter on the skin than I would have expected, but I can tell you it goes on really, really quickly. So if you have a fast morning where you have to get out of the house, pretty quickly, this could be a good choice. It does have good coverage, I'll give it that, and it doesn't feel uncomfortable on the skin. In other words, it feels lightweight. So very, very interesting foundation. This is my Beauty Pie Under Eye Corrector. I really like this formula because it tends to really brighten my under eyes. Can you see that as it's going on? It really does have a brightening quality. The formula feels a lot like the Pixi Under Eye Corrector. This seems to brighten a little bit more than this. This is the Dior Forever Skin Corrector. I've been thinking about this for the longest time. I'm so excited to try it. I do love the Dior Forever Skin Go Foundation. That is the foundation that I go to if I really want my skin to look very, very pretty. In other words, that's kind of my dress-up foundation. I'm curious about this formula. I picked it up in the color 1.5N, which of course is the neutral undertone. Has a nice doe foot applicator right here. So we'll see. Oh, it feels really creamy. Has a little bit of a thicker consistency. It's feeling very, very rich and moisturizing. Just gonna press it in with my sponge. You know how it feels? It feels emollient. That was the word I was looking for. It's feeling really moisturizing underneath my eyes and it's done a great job of covering up my dark circles. It looks really, really good. It's blended in beautifully. Feels very, very comfortable. It doesn't necessarily feel light like the Neutrogena concealer stick feels, but it does feel very, very moisturizing and almost nourishing. I'm going to set it with my Fenty Lavender Powder. Just get a little bit on the tip of my brush and then I swirl that around in the lid. Tap it off and then press that in. Flip the brush over and press it in on the other side. Then I take my sponge and just press it in. I picked up the Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer in the color Amber and look at this color. 
I don't know you guys, that might be a little bit too dark, but we'll see. I'm really excited about cream bronzers these days. I just love both the ones that I've been using, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. And then at the other end of the price range is the Catrice Triangle Artist Stick. Love both of those. And I think what I love about both of them is that they're both cream bronzers. So I'm kind of on the cream bronzer train right now. We'll give this a whirl. You can see it right here on my finger. I don't know how this is going to work. I do like the fact that it's a very cool color. A little bit up here on my forehead. And then down around my chin. I suppose I could have used my brush to do this, huh? What a concept. Well, we're all in now, so I'll just continue on here. I'm going to take my stipple brush. You know, that color is looking okay. It's not looking too dark at the moment. I think it looked a lot darker in the container. Just blend that in. Ooh, I like that. Isn't that pretty? Blends in super easy. And then down underneath my chin. This just helps my double chin to look a little less double. Isn't that just the prettiest packaging? I'm going to put a little bit more up here on my forehead. Yeah, I think putting it on with a brush is the smarter move. <laughs> look at that tiny little Nars blush. Isn't that just the cutest little thing? It's teeny tiny. This is in the color Orgasm. Of course, this is an iconic color. It's just been around for a long time and is so very popular. This is kind of a peachy pink tone. I'm just going to pounce that on my cheeks. Oh gosh, that's pretty. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Oof. If you like this color, but you don't like the price of the NARS blush, the Luminoso by Milani, the baked blush line, very, very close. But I have to tell you, I think this is prettier. <laughs> it has a gold shift to it. It's so pretty. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up, but golly. That's really a pretty blush. For a highlight today, I have the ColourPop. This is in the color Lunch Money. This is an iconic shade. So many people love this shade. I haven't used it yet, so here it is on my finger. Let's see what it looks on the back of my hand. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty sparkly. <laughs> so I'll go lightly here. It's really a champagne gold shimmer. So pretty. Actually, I just didn't need very much because the blush had a little bit of shimmer in it already. But I do like the fact that I'm lightening and brightening up the complexion a little bit with these products because the foundation was very, very matte. I'm going to dust a little bit of the Milani Prep Set and Glow all over the whole complexion just to brighten things up a little bit. This is from Catrice. This is their Prime and Find Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. If you pick this up, make sure you shake it up because there's little glow particles that are in here. Now I'm going to line my eyes in tight line with my Milani Lay Liner. This is in the color Noir Cashmere. It looks black, but it's kind of a charcoal black. It's really a nice soft black. I'm going to start on my upper lids. And once I have that laid down, I go back in with a tiny little angled brush and just really smudge that out. There's just no way for me to get a smooth line on my lids because they're a little bit crinkly and wrinkly. So I find that having a smudgy look for my eyeliner really works best for me. Today I'm trying a mascara that I've tried once before. It's the Telescopic Carbon Black from L'Oreal. This is a very, very interesting mascara in that it gives a lot of length with a very, very fluttery look. In other words, my lashes looked so very light and fluttery. It was really a different look. I used it on its own. Today, I'm going to try it with the L'Oreal Voluminous Base. I'm wondering if this is going to give more volume, so I'm curious of how this mascara is going to act when I use the base. So for the base, I just put on a thin coat. And then I'm going to let this dry for just a minute or two. 
You know, they call this telescopic. I can say that's true. My lashes were so long when I used this. It has a very different wand. There's almost no bristles on the end. It's a very, very unique wand. Very, very skinny and long. And you can see just from those two passes how long it makes your lashes. It's crazy. Here we have just one coat on this eye, and you can see the difference between this eye and this eye. So here we have two coats on both lashes. Now keep in mind, <laughs> I use an eyelash serum too, so that really contributes to the longer lashes, but that mascara is pretty impressive. Today for lips, I'm gonna use one of the Revlon matte lipsticks. I love these lipsticks. These to me are very, very close to the Huda Beauty matte lipsticks. The difference is, is that I find these don't quite last as long as the Huda Beauty. Literally, when I wear a Huda Beauty matte, I have to take it off at the end of the day. I'm kind of a lip musher. You know, I'm mushing my lips throughout the day and I find the Huda really stays. The Revlon stay as well, but not like the Huda does. This is in the color Pick Me Up, and I'm going to use an LA Girl lip liner. This is in the color Flesh. I want to keep the lips fairly neutral today because I have such a bright eye. I don't want them competing with each other. And here we have the lipstick. Here we have the finished look. A couple of things I did off camera is I lengthened the tip of my brow with my Shady Slim brow pencil. I love these for that because the pencil is so very, very thin. It's really easy to bring that tip out and have it look nice and very, very clean. So love these Shady Slim brow pencils. They're a little hard to find. I know when I try to find them in store, it's a dicey proposition and generally the colors are all picked over. One place I used to be able to get them was from Ulta, but I'm not seeing them carry the Shady Slim anymore. I'll have to look on the Walmart website to see if they're there, but this is a great pencil when you want to do detail work on your brows. I also used my Sigma Essentials palette. I love this palette. This stays on my makeup table all the time because there's things in this palette that I can't get anywhere else, and I use this about every time I do my makeup. I used this color Snow and I lightened underneath my brows and on the inside corner of my eyes just to brighten things up a little bit. This color Snow is so jam-packed with pigment. You need just a very, very little bit. But for me, brightening up my inner corner, I haven't found anything that works better than this. So for the makeup I use today, I have opinions, a lot of opinions. The L'Oreal Infallible, this is their Fresh Wear Foundation in a Powder. You know what? For me, it's a pass, and I'll tell you why. I'm noticing some cakiness and heaviness around my mouth, and all in all, I can't say that the formula did anything to really enhance my skin. It did cover up things very nicely, but it left a very, very flat matte finish, which is not my preference. This is a drugstore price foundation, and I feel like there's a lot of foundations out there that are at a drugstore price that are very, very good. This just did not suit me very well. It feels a little bit dry on the skin, although I don't know if it would look dry if you saw me in person. I can just say that the formula itself and the finished look on my skin was not my favorite. So for me, this is a pass. The Bye Bye Birdie palette, I would probably love this palette if I was about 30 years younger. <laughs> I do love the purple colors, but the fact that there's at least two or three shades in here that have a lot of glitter in the shade, these two right here, you can see the glitter on my fingers right there. I'm never going to wear these shades. And while I do think the concept is very, very pretty, I'm not sure that this is a palette that I'm going to be reaching for. Of course, if I want this kind of vibrant purple look, I know where to go to get it. But all in all, I can't say that for me, this is a good palette for my more mature eyes. However, it was a lot of fun playing with a brighter color palette today. The new concealer, the Forever Skin Corrector from Dior, I really, really like this. And here are the reasons why. First of all, it feels great on the skin. It feels very emollient. 
and very, very skincare-like and moisturizing. I think it looks terrific underneath my eyes. It's not cakey. It makes my under eyes look a little bit better. It does a great job of covering up what I want to cover up and not leaving my under eyes looking dry and cakey. It's a little bit heavier formula, and when I say heavy, I almost hesitate to use that word because it almost sounds negative. I suppose what I could say is it's a little bit thicker and richer formula. It does feel very, very good. It does a great job of correcting. I think it looks pretty. So I'm a fan of the Dior Forever Skin Corrector Under Eye Concealer. The Cream Bronzer from Fenty, I like this. It looks scary in the pan. It looks really, really dark for my skin tone. My skin tone is fairly light. You can tell I'm a very fair person, but it worked out really well. This is in the color amber, and what I like is it's not a warm tone. It's a cooler tone, which is what I was looking for. What I've learned is to use a brush for application. I think it goes on a lot quicker. It's super easy to blend out. I think it looks terrific on the skin. It's probably right up there with my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. I believe this is less expensive, and my Triangle Artist Stick from Catrice, which is a lot less expensive than this. Although, you know, my Triangle Artist Stick, I went through that in a few months. I very rarely go through makeup, so I'm not sure if you priced it ounce by ounce or how long it lasts. It might be fairly equal between this and the Artist Contour Stick, so something to keep in mind. The Tiny Little Nars Blush in the color Orgasm. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you what, you guys. I bought the Luminoso from Milani probably two years ago, right when I very first started my channel. I love that blush. This blush is so much better, and I know that sounds sort of silly to say, but there's something about the shift on the skin that is so very pretty. The Milani just doesn't do that. I think the colors are fairly similar, but there's something about this that is so very, very pretty. I'm not sure if this is the regular size or like a sample size. I can't remember. It does look pretty doggone tiny here, and I don't even remember what I paid for it. But I'll tell you what, whatever I paid for it, I'm fine with it because I love this blush. Super pretty. This is in the color Orgasm. The Telescopic Carbon Black Mascara from L'Oreal. Holy smokes! I'm really impressed. I like the way my lashes look, and using that L'Oreal Mascara Base really gives them a lot more volume. The length is extraordinary. It's super easy to work with. No clumping at all. If you haven't tried this and you're casting around for a mascara that's at a drugstore price, I can tell you, I'm a fan. And the Pick Me Up Lipstick from Revlon. I'm a huge fan of this line of lipsticks. Gosh, I probably have six or seven of these matte lipsticks, but lipsticks are my deal, we know. <laughs> I've got a bit of a lipstick problem. But this one is very, very pretty. I love the color. I love the way it feels on the lips. Very, very moisturizing and hydrating. Doesn't stay as long as the Huda, but if that's not a problem for you, I think these are a great value. The BK Beauty Makeup Brushes from the Angie Hot and Flashy Collection super fan. This is the first time I've used them. I liked every single brush. And one thing I want to shout out Angie for is that she really, really picked some great shapes and sizes for these brushes. The fact that I can really get some detail work into the crease with this brush and have the bristles be very, very soft so they're not moving my lid around, they're just moving the shadow around, brilliant really like this. This flat brush, love this one. So all in all, I think a lot of great thought went into this collection. If you haven't used the brushes from BK Beauty, I can tell you what, they're really a quality line of brushes at some pretty doggone good prices. As much as we might think, how's another brush collection going to solve any problems? I can tell you, I think that Angie really did a great job. Very, very thoughtful in the sizes and the shaping. Love these brushes. I think you might too. I want to thank you for joining me for this Get Ready With Me. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. I get so thrilled when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that and I appreciate you. 
Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.